Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing configuring SRX security logs in JWeb. All right, so let's jump right to the example. Uh, what we have here, I want to first look at the topology on the left. We have user1, which then connects into vsrx1 on Gigi001. And that user is using the uh, 10.1.1.100 IP address. And then we have the syslog server, which is connecting in on vsrx1 on Gigi002. And that syslog server is using the 10.5.100 IP address. And then we have the internet connection, which is connecting on Gigi000 for vsrx1. And so that's how things are connected. And what we'll be having is we'll have user1 communicating with a host on the internet. And in this example, we want to configure local security logging for internet bound traffic. And we want to store those logs on VSRX1. And then we want to configure remote security logging for internet bound traffic. And we're going to store those logs on the syslog server. The whole point of this learning byte is doing this exercise through the JWeb interface of VSRX1. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and get this going. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And what we want to do is we want to jump to the configuration section. And under here, we want to, under device setup, basic settings, we have a logging configuration option. We want to select that. And under logging, it looks pretty sparse, but the reason behind that is by default, it's set to no logging. So we want to change that, and we want to change that to stream mode. Well, there's two different modes. There's stream and event mode. In event mode, it processes the logs in the control plane. Stream mode, it processes the logs directly in the forwarding plane. And so we want to select stream mode. That's going to be more effective, more efficient. And so we'll leave that at stream mode. And we want to select source interface. We could select a source address, but we'll select a source interface. And we'll change that to Gigi002. That's the interface that is connected to the syslog server from vsrx1. And then format, we can set that to syslog. And then we can call the stream, we'll call this remote logging. And we'll set server location, we'll set this to server IP. If we leave that at local, it's just going to store it local. And we do want to do that, but we'll do that in the next step. Okay, type, uh, just leave that at standard, that's fine. The IP address, so this is going to be the IP address of the syslog server 10.5.5.100. And then we can press the or click the plus button, and that'll add it to the uh, the field below that shows what we have for logging setup. And this is security logging. And then we want to add a second stream that does the local logging. So we'll call this local logging. We'll set save location to local. Leave that at standard. That's fine. We'll set the file name to local logs. And again, press the plus button, and that adds to the field below. We can see that we have two different streams set up. We have remote logging. We have local logging. For remote logging, we have a host, a location we're sending it to, type of standard. For local logging, we are sending it to a local file that is located in the var traffic log directory. We'll call that local logs for the file name. And then we just need to click apply. OK, so we applied that. And we could commit the changes right away, but it's not going to work right away if we commit the changes because we need to configure our security policy to collect those logs first or to capture those logs. Because right now we're sending traffic from user one to the internet. The security policy is allowing it, but there's no sort of logging set up. So we need to actually set up some sort of logging. And so we need to go to security. You know, keep in mind we're under configuration still. And then we need to go to security policy. And then we need to go to rules. Then it brings up the rules. And here we have one rule. The name is INET Access. And we need to configure this rule to allow for security logging you know, or logging in general. And we're going to do that with just the session initialization part of the logging. So I'll go ahead and select it, click the Edit button. Then we select Rule Options. And it brings up some options here. We have some log options. We want to log at session init time. And then click OK. Click Update. So we're updating the rule. And now we need to save the policy by clicking Save. Let's just know that the changes were saved. And the last thing we need to do is commit the configuration. Select the highlighted button up top and select Commit. 
and it commits the configuration. And so we're good there. So let's go ahead and look at those logs. And the thing to keep in mind here is even with the local logs, it's no real good way to look at them in the JWeb interface. So we'll need to jump to the CLI just to look at those logs easily. All right, so here is the VSRX CLI. And we can look at the var traffic dash log, local logs file. And we can see we've got a bunch of files in here. This is, or excuse me, a bunch of messages in this file. And that's perfect. That's what we want to see. And we can, yep, things will change. We go down again. Granted, I could just do last here so we can see the last few. Yes, and so we're getting logs. That's perfect. We're getting logs that uh, the traffic was sent from 10.1.1.100 going to 8.8.8.8. And that traffic is being logged locally. So let's look at the syslog server and we'll look at the syslog file that's located under the var log directory. And we'll use the tell command. So we just look at the most recent logs. And you can see, yes, we are getting logs. We're getting, we do that again. We can see that we're getting new logs. And so perfect, that looks good. And these are the exact same logs that we're getting locally as well. They are being sent from 10.1.1.100 and going to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So that's perfect, that's what we wanna see. We can see here that the logs are being stored locally and also being stored remotely on the syslog server. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure local and remote security logging. And we demonstrated how to verify local and remote security logging. And keep in mind, we configured this through the JWeb, but we did have to look at the CLI on the VSRX1 device to see the local logs. And of course, we had to look at the CLI on the syslog server to look at those logs as well. And so as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.